Thank you for having us. You're welcome. Welcome back again to see you. Thank you. It's very nice to be here. Um, what I'll do is, if it's all right with you, is I'll take you through the audit, the financials, the opinion, um, the management letter, and then if you have any questions, we can ask them as we can answer them as you, we go along. Okay. And then if there's anything else at the end, we can follow up with that. Okay. All right. Um, again, I want to I want to actually thank you for all of the help that your staff had provided us with the audit. Uh, we were able to get it done in a timely fashion, so that's always greatly appreciated. Uh, we don't always have that help when we go in to do audits wherever we go, so we do appreciate that. Uh, on page one and two of your report is the opinion letter. This opinion letter states that you did receive an unmodified opinion uh, what we used to call the unqualified opinion in that you have a clean opinion on your financial statements uh, for the town that you are in full <coughs> compliance with all with GAP and all the GASB pronouncements up to this point in time <coughs> and you can see on it's under the opinion section of the, the the letter that does say that everything is fairly stated in all material respects <coughs> being your government, governmental activities, your major general fund, as well as all the aggregate remaining funds of the town. I'm next going to take you back in the report to page 42. Page 42 is a budgetary comparison of revenues and, ex and um, your budget versus actual on your revenues. And prior to, to you did use $875,000 in 2013 to reduce the tax rate. Um, and overall, you did, you had revenue came in $674,529 higher than what was budgeted, which is in the far right hand column at the bottom. A lot of that can be attributed to miscellaneous income being higher than estimated your licenses and fee income was $403,000 higher than what was anticipated and your tax income came in $112,000 higher than what was estimated to make up that um, $674,000 increase than what you had estimated. On page 43, we do a similar comparison of your budget versus actual on your appropriations. Now what we take into consideration here is also your encumbrances. By law, by state law, you can encumber funds from one year to the next. So we reflect those encumbrances here on this schedule. On page 44, you will see that you actually, in total, <coughs> including encumbrances in the far right-hand column, you underspent your appropriations by $2,046,130. A lot of that savings was in, you saved a good chunk of that, was $972,686 less in transfers than what we're budgeted for. Uh, in, under current general government, you saved $184,564,000. A lot of that savings can be found in the financial <coughs> administration line. So when we go to page 45 of the report, this is kind of where everyone likes to, uh, to see where you are. This is kind of everyone's favorite page, if you will. Uh, we, you started 2013 with an unassigned fund balance of $3,224,179. From that, you used that, as I mentioned earlier, that $875,000 to reduce your taxes in 2013. You did have a revenue surplus that we saw on Schedule 1, and you had the unexpended balance of appropriations that we noted on Schedule 2 to have an overall budget surplus of $2,720,659, which is very good. Also, we have to can take into consideration any uh, adjustments in your other types of fund balance. Uh, whether they be the non-spendable, the restricted, or the committed. So depending on whether to up or down impacts your unassigned fund balance because they have to come from somewhere, that being unassigned. 
So we did have an, in, an increase in the non-spendable balance of 6,025, uh, an increase in the restricted fund balance, as well as an increase in the committed fund balance of 583,674. So that actually, those increases actually reduced your unassigned fund balance because they went toward th those purposes. Leaving you with an unassigned, overall unassigned fund balance of $4,475,677. So that's what you look at in 14 when you go to determine what you're gonna use, if any, for tax purposes. That's that number. Now, because of <coughs> GASB standards, under GAP, I should say, we also do a further reconciliation on this, on this schedule to show because property tax revenue, if it's not measurable or available within 60 days after year end, we actually have to defer that money. So you'll see a further reconciliation <coughs> here that we actually, of that property tax revenue, we actually deferred $1,105,000 uh, of property tax revenue. And then we actually have to remove the allowance for uncollectible taxes because we'd be counting it twice if we didn't, we have to add it back. To give you what we report on, the balance sheet of $3,510,274. Now that particular, that number there, can, you can see on exhibit one, <coughs> C, C1, in the far left-hand column, which is considered your general fund, and it's on page 14. And I apologize for the page flipping. There's no really easy way nope. to do this. You're doing a good job. <laughs> Very thorough job. Oh, thank you. Okay. So as you can see, and I'll go back to the other numbers on this page, but the unassigned reported fund balance is the $3,510,274, which gets reported to be in, in compliance with GAAP, but for your tax rate setting, you want, you're looking at the $4,475,000. A lot of people ask me, well, what number should I be looking at for what? So that's why I always want to make that very clear. Also on page 14, so you'll see that you had a gen you only had one major fund. Your, your general fund is always under GASB 34, is always considered a major fund. No matter what, it's always major. The other funds we have been reported under one column here on page 14 called other governmental funds. They did not meet the criteria of what we consider to be a major fund. We have to do a calculation to see what funds are considered to be considered major and non-major. So all your other funds of the town are under this other go governmental fund column, which are put out in detail in the back of the report, starting on page 46 and then going to page 47. So if you kind of hold your hand on page 14 and flip to page 46, You'll see that those t the far right hand column on page 46, all those totals have been brought forward and reported as the other governmental funds. But if you wanted to know, well, what makes up all those governmental funds, here they are in front of you on page 46. Whether it be conservation, recreation revolving, uh, recycling revolving, capital project fund, and your permanent fund, which your permanent funds are your uh, cemetery trust funds uh, for, the, for the town. And likewise, on page 47, we show you the individual, the in, what a lot of people refer to as the income statement. It's a lot shorter than saying the combining schedule of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance. These numbers, the total here, can be seen on page 16 in the other governmental fund column as well. We like to, this, these schedules in the back aren't required, but we as a firm like to show them to you so you know what you're looking at, you know, what makes up these numbers. Okay. And you'll also see back on page 14, 
that you did have a healthy cash balance. Your cash and equivalents at the beginning of at December 31st was $11,766,595. You'll also see that we had re reported <coughs> restricted cash. And you may say, well, what's the restricted cash and the restricted investments? Because of GASB 54, and we personally, as accountants and auditors, we wish they'd stop slowing down these pronouncements. But they required uh, certain funds to be blended with funds from where money has come from. What they say that if a fund has a transfer in from another fund of greater than 50%, we have to blend that existing fund where, with the fund from where the money came from. So in the case here, we've actually reported your expendable trust funds and the library fund as blended funds with the general fund. That's why we show this money here restricted because it's restricted for the capital reserve funds and it's restricted for the library. The uh, water and sewer also. Oh, that's right, in the water and sewer. Because they receive the, the majority of their funding from the general fund. And on page 30, note 5, We'll give you that breakdown, we had a few others as well, we'll give you that breakdown of what makes up those totals under restricted cash and investments. So it was, as I mentioned, the library, the expendable trust, water and sewer, economic development, and road improvements. Okay. And likewise, that's why you have such high restricted and committed fund balances because of the water fund, the sewer fund, um, the library, and the capital reserve funds. And on under note 17, we give you, which is on page 35, we give you a detailed breakdown of what actually makes up the non-spendable, the restricted, the committed, assigned, and unassigned fund balances. So again, the, the nice thing about the notes is they're, they're there to give you what you're looking at now, to give you um, information of what makes up some of these major, these material numbers. So that gives you the breakdown. Uh, likewise, on page 14, you did have a, a large due to other governments of $7,943,296. And that number is substantially, I'm going to get to the note here, is, it's on page 32 under note 11, but what the, the majority of that number represents is the remaining balance you owed to the school district, both Seabrook School District and Winnicunit at the end of the year. Uh, because they're on, you're on a calendar year, the school's on a fiscal year, that represents the last six months of their fiscal year that you had owed them for um, their district assessment. And then you also had a few other small uh, payables, one to New Hampshire retirement system at the end of the year, and also a small one due to the state of Massachusetts for some fees. Again, what we do is we look at your payables, and same with receivables, and we determine are they owed to another governmental entity or just a, a, an, a vendor or a local person. Uh, you know, a local vendor, and we break them out between intergovernmental and accounts receivable. So again, the notes give you that breakdown of what makes up these numbers. Any questions on the numbers so far? I have a question, but I'll wait until you finish. Okay. You do. Okay. Now, lastly, on the back of the report, we put in our management letter. And this is where we put in items, and that's on page 48, the last page of the report, where we, where we have found things that we feel are, need to be addressed. They, they could misstate materially the financial statements if not addressed. Uh, fortunately, in this situation, we did have the one finding, but you had already addressed it by the time we had gotten here. When we came to do the audit, this had been corrected. But because it w had occurred throughout most of the year, we felt that it, we had to report on it. And then we did let you know that it had been corrected. But what we found was that the <coughs> bank accounts of the town under the custody of the, the 
mostly the treasurer, were not being reconciled with the general ledger. They weren't being done timely um, or in maybe correctly. So you had hired an outside consultant to come in and assist you with that, and she did a great job in, in getting this all put together and assisting um, your finance department with that reconciliation process. So as you can see that we have noted that these um, have been properly um, corrected and we did not, because of her assistance with your finance department, we did not have to make any audit adjustments. But again, felt it was warranted, <coughs> we report it to you. So that was the only um, material item that we, we brought forth in the report. Now you did get a governance letter, which we do put in some other housekeeping type issues uh, that would never, would, would not have an impact on the financial statements. But this was so the only one. If you please explain to our taxpayer that it happened on 2013 and what period, so they will not freak out. Oh, that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. It, it was in 2013, and then in the subsequent year when you brought an MRI, they corrected so at this point, this, correct, this condition has been corrected. So when I became the manager to amplify a, a little bit more, um, July of 13, it was one of the items um, that I reported to the board uh, and that we took corrective action on. Uh, and so <coughs> for me, um, in order to, to deal with the um, 2012 audit, um, we actually did reconciliations through 12, but then they fell off again in 13. And the issue that was raised here by the by Plodzik, um essentially continued until uh, we brought in the outside help uh, to correct it. Uh, so when we did correct it, the board was uh, made aware. The board ordered steps taken to um, correct it. Uh, and we've done so uh, in a way that hopefully will, going forward, make sure it doesn't happen again. And also, if you can uh, explain or tell our taxpayers that the people or the department who negligence these kind of things happen, they're not working for Town of Seabrook. No, and, and I, I think that um, without going into uh, too much detail, um, there's been a change um, in a man, two, two things of note. Uh, the first one, um, we've, we have a new finance manager, uh, and I think that uh, speaking generally, the audit report uh, for this year is done timely. Uh, we're happy to have them here reporting. Uh, in 2012, we didn't really get it until very, very late, and the board never had a presentation. Uh, the second item is um, we think that changing the treasurer's position to uh, full-time position has been significantly helpful in dealing with some of these items. And, and item three is um, we've the board authorized some assistance to uh, get us to the starting line uh, with Rita Donaldson, who's actually uh, sitting in the audience now and, and has done a fantastic job uh, for the community. Those three things, I think, <coughs> to answer your question, uh, Mr. Selectman, um, have all allowed us to push that and get rid of the, the problem that we had. And it was a significant problem. Uh, the board was not able to get, in, in my view, accurate financial reports. Uh, in your packet <coughs> right now, you have the uh, September expenditure report. Uh, we're providing you uh, with cash flow reports uh, and actual balance sheets, uh, all things that um, were not being provided to the board uh, in the prior year. So. Uh, we've made a significant headway. There's always more to be done, but um, we appreciate um, uh, Plodzik's uh, advice and counsel uh, beyond the audit. Uh, they've made good recommendations, uh, and we think they've done a, a terrific job for us. I, I have something to add to that. I would like to thank Kerry and all the secretaries and Rita who have worked very hard, and they've all worked together, and I think this is why this has been one of the best audits we've had in a long time. I think a very thorough one, and I think you spent a lot of time with them. Mm -hmm. I think everybody was a great help to you to get things done, and I think they do, do deserve a lot of credit. And the manager also spent much time with it also. 
Matter of fact, you see him here Saturdays and sometimes Sundays working on this stuff. So we know how hard he's worked on it. But I'd like to thank everybody that was involved in it. And I think Mr. Smith had a question that you wanted to ask. A couple of questions. Sure. Go to it. All right. Way too many numbers for me to digest in one sitting. <laughs> to be very honest with you, um, I will digest eventually. Um, you mentioned that three to four million dollars that we had in. What percentage of a budget should that gap be on a normal consistency? You mean the fund balance? Yeah. They're saying under, like with um, national uh, GFOA, which is the Government Finance Officers Association, they're recommending anywhere between, I believe, 9 and 17 percent of your, um, of your total appropriations should be set aside as unassigned fund balance. So you're talking that we should have 9 to 17 percent of ours? Nine That's what they recommend. <coughs> the state, I think, is a little lower. I think it's 10 to 15, but it's yeah. maybe 7 and a half to 15. Before. As an auditing firm, <laughs> what do you recommend? It varies from client to client. It, it really does. And I have some clients where their fund balance is significantly higher in terms of the percentage of their, their estimated appropriations each year. And uh, they're actually working hard to reduce their fund balance, which is a nice problem to have. Um, it really it, it depends on the governing body of the town manager and what your preferences are. These are guidelines that you can then take and fit to the needs of the town of Seabrook. So for us to say that it should be between this and this, I, I agree that I think 17 is high, I yeah. think 15 is high. I'd say between 7.5 and, and 10 is where sure. I personally would be comfortable, but I'm not an elected official. I mean, from my point of view, I think that, that safeguards you against uncertainties that may yeah. occur. So that for future years, 2014, et cetera, you think we should be in that percent level? I would say On that was a general safe. rule, providing I, um, the earth doesn't open up and uh, right. you know, something. Right. Yeah, else. I'd be somewhere in that range. Um, just to, you know, protect yourself from anything, any unforeseen circumstances, you know. Um, hopefully, you know, you, di you didn't have a, say the roof, you know, roof blew off in a bad storm you know and you've got to fix it you know where's that money going to come from because it's an emergency most likely it's going to come from surplus so yeah you want enough in there to protect you uh, for those unforeseen circumstances I did have an actual town and this was you know where they didn't have enough they weren't able to build up enough but I actually had a town whose roof was about ready to collapse they had the they had pictures they showed me of the broken timbers holding up the small, it's in a small town, but their roof was ready to collapse and they luckily had enough in surplus to cover it. But, you know, you, you want to have enough in there so you're not strapped. Should something happen, um, you want to make sure you have enough left for other things that might, that might go wrong. So I'd say those are good guidelines um, to, to kind of to fall between, even like the 10 to say 17 percent. Bill? We make uh, notes somewhere in there that we I, I mean, to come in that ballpark. I, I think I understand. I think that. that the goal is to drive up the fund balance uh, from from its current spot, and and I think we will be able to do it. Um, I always say, Ray, that um, when you're an auditor uh, or when you set guidelines, it's much easier to say things like 17 percent because you don't have to take those votes, um, but. Um, I, I think that the real number should be in the seven and a half to ten percent range, and I think it's prudent financially to be there. Uh, I do agree with that. I don't agree with seventeen percent, but um, uh, I think it's good advice, and I think that the goal should I'm always. I'm not be looking for seventeen percent. I'm looking for a relatively guideline safety cushion that the town can use for the future, not for now. Seven and a half <coughs> to ten percent. But, and also, we always had a healthy number, you know, mm -hmm. even, even yes. in the past. You yes. Know. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a couple of questions. Uh, along while you are working, uh, your observation, uh, the internal control, how much you saw? Uh, I'll let Mike we, address that. We, we typically will go through and look at the financial statements and identify material areas of financial statements. 
and from then we'll actually document what is our understanding of your processes in place. From there we'll actually do what we call a walkthrough. So say it's cash receipts, we'll at random go in and pick a cash receipt and we'll walk through what our understanding of your controls to be. In that process, if we identify something that doesn't agree with our understood procedures, we'll then go back to the client and say, did we misunderstand or is there an issue with this particular transaction? That didn't occur here. Our evaluations of internal controls here were that they were effective and they were, they were designed properly. So we do that in such areas would be cash receipts, cash disbursements, payroll processing, um, and just to name a few. It is anything material we, we would address. We, we looked at sewer, we looked at water rents, sewer rents, uh, library controls, um, I would imagine recreation. It would detail. Yeah, we looked at quite a few. Did you have any problem to get into uh, um, uh, any other department besides this building? Access to any other documents, anything? You have free? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we. I, I would say we had no issue. I mean, yeah. to be honest, they, the, everyone we dealt with was extremely cooperative this year. Um, that's not always the case in, in community. You get some resistance from certain areas, and the, the town of Seabrook, that wasn't an issue. I mean, typically, not to knock on trustees or trust funds, they tend to be difficult to nail down and get a chance to talk to. That wasn't an issue here. We had a suitcase waiting for us, and somebody on on the line immediately when we had questions. So, so no, I, I, no, sorry, go ahead. Uh, the other years, uh, you know, on, the, on your report, on the last page, you had a line or two about the credit card issues. This year, as you know that since 2013, the town and the town manager is changing our system. Any comment about right. that? We put that in the, the governance letter. I think we, that was addressed in the governance letter. Yeah. yeah. So that, it didn't, we didn't feel it, it warranted to be, it wasn't to be reported because it wasn't, again, it, that issue we didn't feel was significant enough to put in the report because it wouldn't have a significant or material impact on the financials. Mm -hmm. We did identify it and we did put it in the governance letter, which you will have a copy so, of. So overall, you're very happy with what you saw from the town and, and the help you got from everybody in yes. the town. In, in terms and of the credit cards? From our standpoint, from an internal control standpoint, we think you've taken an effective step forward. Yeah. Um, the, the before, I think there was a lot of risk involved, not to accuse anyone of anything, yeah. but I think the opportunity was there. I think what you're doing now is really pulling back that risk quite a bit, and uh, the oversight that you're going to have is going to be far superior to what was in place in the past. So I would say that that's absolutely, to, to your point, what we dealt with this year was... How did you, know, you, how did you find our purchasing... Uh, Agreements to be uh, in your in your audit. Did you find it to be well done, well taken care of. We had uh, one area where the department was having trouble with the purchasing. I think there was timeliness of the submittal of invoices. And I think that's been corrected, if I'm not it, mistaken. It, yeah, and it, it, where we came in so late, some of the issues that we were finding because we're looking at last year's, the board, the town manager, and the finance department, they'd already addressed it. But we still have a responsibility to let you know that you know we did. We did notice this while we did it. What you've seen has been improved. That's what Absolutely. I'm saying. That's what I'm interested in. And so I know that for a fact for what you're working with right now. But we've had an opportunity to have some discussions on the governance letter. Uh, and to first on a bull's question, um, I have had an opportunity uh, as just reference to talk about the new policy, the credit card policy that's actually before you, explain what we're trying to do with it. Uh, and you just heard the evaluation and secondly um, I, I think it's depending on how you implement it but um, new uh, ways of procurement uh, and making it both more transparent and more cost effective for the town of Seabrook we've talked a little bit uh, about that with the auditors as well so um, as they bring issues up we try to show them what, what our perspective solutions are but overall like I say you're very happy yes yes your, your staff worked very hard. Um, I know Carrie and myself were exchanging emails, requesting information at very odd hours of the night, to be honest with you. And, uh, <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's the level of commitment you have with yeah. her. And well, yes. Rita's, Rita's you know, contributions were certainly any, any, I think any of the, the uh, people that you work with here are all committed to that. And I, it's not a one of them that probably wouldn't answer you or get back to you. I don't care if it was 12 o'clock at night. If right. it was something very important, they want to get yeah. back to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the best spot. You want to put it in the wrap? 
I'm sorry for my ignorance, but uh, how do you define capital assets? Actually, there is a note, and what it is, let's see, let me get, get you the page. Actually, under note 1J on page 25, basically what they are is, and it, we spell it out here, is that it's an item that we that is a value of ten thousand dollars? It's on the la very last paragraph on page twenty-five. An item that is greater in value than ten thousand dollars with a minimum useful life of greater than one year. Um, and basically, it's it's anything, you know, that you have a policy which I think is being. Uh, reviewed, and you're going to be. Um, I think that's going to be up for discussion. It's actually up for discussion today, uh, and and a capital asset management contract, uh, Mr. Smith, uh, yeah. which is on the agenda for today. Yeah, I was the only reason I was asking. It said that that's 84 percent of our net, 84.97, which is almost 85 percent. Right. Of investments, so obviously, <laughs> majority of our. Right. right. <laughs> and what it is, it's basically anything that um, it can be a building, it's roads, um, you, you know, your, your water and sewer plants, um, uh, anything that has a value of greater than $10,000 uh, with a useful life of greater than a year would be considered a capital asset. And also you're looking at that, Paul, having this company come in, but we actually do testing as well. Once we get your capital asset list, we look at it we also will do testing of your expenditures, so we know that your threshold is ten thousand. When we do our testing, we're on the we're on the lookout for expenditures greater than ten thousand, or if there's a capital project, we know that you know you're going to be building. You know, lately, recently was the upgrade to the sewer treatment plant. <coughs> that all gets capitalized as a new capital asset. So we actually do testing to look for additions that you may have missed or also disposals. You may, you know, there may be a vehicle that, you know, police cruiser, uh, maybe about a $35,000 purchase, maybe 40000 by the time you add all the, um, yeah. all the equipment yeah. to it. Um, but after, you know, say five years, that may be disposed of. So we're actually looking to make it's sure you're picking up the disposals as well. So we do testing in that area. One thing that's very nice that we do have a kind of a, I would say, an excellent mathematician here who, uh, who's, who's taught math, all, all those teachings and everything else, so it's very nice to have him to ask some questions like this and, and be very understanding of what's going on. Right. And we can be proud to have him on board. So that capital, at, just one last, that capital asset contract is before you and would actually have them come in and update uh, the inventory and could you, could you talk about the uh, GASB requirement for us there and, and why that makes sense for us? Yes, under GASB 34, uh, that's when everything kind of changed, but you are required to report your capital assets. Um, and that, those on the government-wide statements, which are on page 12, you'll see under the assets section, uh, capital assets, we have land and construction in progress of four million, $524,570. We break these out because land and construction in progress, because that's an asset that's not quite finished yet uh, because it's being worked on, uh, that is not depreciated. And then we have all of the other capital assets we note here that are net of depreciation, which totaled $64,750,290. They can be further broken down on p under note 8 on page 31 and the depreciation is shown on page 32. But GASB 34 requires that you report on the government-wide statements all of your capital assets. Now some people, and what they say is that you have to have a reasonable useful life put on these assets as well. So you've got to come up with a threshold, and what they recommend is that you have to make sure that you record at least 80% of your capital assets on the town's financial statements. You've got to capture them. Um, or, uh, and if you don't, then we may have to modify the opinion. And we do in some towns where 
they don't, they've only brought on the land right. or maybe the buildings or you know anything mm -hmm. related to a capital project because they don't have the manpower or the they haven't contracted with a company to do this for them. Um, but this it's very important to report those capital assets because if you don't, then you're not in complete. You're not your financial statements right. are not fairly stated. So this way, by reporting them, you've got the whole picture on your financials. Again, GASB 34 wanted it to be so that you, the you could record you could take your financial statements and compare them with IBM. I mean that was the thought process. Can you really do that? Not really. Um, but that was the, they wanted the financials to be more like a, a, a commercial entity. So that's why it's important that we re report those, um, all the capital assets. We've got to capture all of them. Now some of them, you know, uh, computers, you know, so a lot of times we'll say computers are like an expenditure um, because they, they are obsolete within three years. Now what we, but we, and we, we have talked about, but you still want to have something, you may not be recording what you consider to be an asset because it's under the threshold, but you still want to have some type of an inventory for the things such as, um, you know, snow blowers and weed whackers and lawn mowers, so that you know you make sure you, they're still on the premise. So that's one thing we've discussed that you want to make sure you have that type of list, you know, so that they don't have feet and and walk off the premise. I, I think this is actually happening now, with uh, what the manager has talked about, getting a complete inventory of everything in every department. You know, right. it's going to take some time, right. but I think everybody's working on it, and I think before long, maybe the next time you come around, you will see every piece or know everything that, that we have in inventory right. also. And that's and it's a good thing, too, also, because, you know, heaven forbid anything should happen, but say, you know, you have, and we've had seen this happen, where there was a fire in a building, and there was equipment stored mm -hmm. in that building. Mm -hmm. Well, what was in the building? Mm -hmm. um, you know, everybody's like, well, we right. think there was this, we think there was that. But this way, if you have a formal documented list, I mean, that goes well towards an insurance claim or, you know, any type of a claim that you may have to put in on I think on you'll it. see that in the near future, probably so on that report. And that's what it sounds like, that's yeah. what you're working yeah. towards, which How is How often do we have to do that, the GASB? Is it every three years? Um, here, this GASB 34, this is, you have to do it now forever. Um, so every year we will ta test capital assets we will Update report every, every additions, year. and then your your probably your equipment. I mean, the capital assets. The company would probably come in, you know, at your discretion how often they should come in to update your assets. Um, but it's a it's an undertaking, especially if you're doing it on your own. It's sometimes good to have a company do it because you your finance department's busy trying to keep your financials in good order. That's just another piece of the pie that takes a lot of time to keep it up to date and accurate. So it's a good thing you do um, contract with a company to help you with that. That's a good idea. As you were doing your audit, let's take it down, break it into five numbers, different areas in the town in which you did the audit. Mm -hmm. One, that area being the worst, five, that area being the best. Is there an area that you would consider between one and three in our process right now that we could make better so that in the future we don't run into difficulties or basically a weakness in our system that you feel might be looked at that we might adjust to? Was there an area? I, I really say, I wouldn't say uh, overall the, the town and everyone we dealt with was cooperative. And we came in at a point where you had the opportunity to implement a lot of changes. So I mean, we really came in at a great point from an odd standpoint. You had brought in an independent contractor to go through all these processes. She identified it with a unbiased opinion. And I believe she brought that to your attention. It gave you really some very good insight. Because as a result, I wouldn't say, I mean, See, I'm, I'm not into the people. <coughs> I'm into the process that we use right now. Mm -hmm. Is there one of the areas that you normally check that you figure we, we could check a little bit better in the future to make our life a little easier? I would say with the new automated purchase order system, you've addressed the area that I would say a lot of other towns have already taken those steps. <laughs> yeah. uh, you're in the right direction, you absolutely are. 
Yeah, that's what I would say is probably the, the purchasing, the, the policies, I mean, credit cards, making sure that you've got policies in place so that people can never say, well, there was, you know, I did this because there was never a policy. So policies are a big area um, to make sure, you know, you've got all your policies in place and up to date. Uh, you know, some of your policies, uh, ex for example, the investment policy uh, has state guidelines that it needs to be reviewed and approved annually. That's an area where we find a lot of times where that's not being done. Or someone will say, well, you know, we've got into a new uh, client, we've got into a new town. Well, what do you mean we have to have an investment policy? Well, if you look at RSA, you know, 4129A paragraph, you know, I think it's like four or five, um, it states that the board and the trustees of trust funds should have each have a policy and it should be reviewed and approved annually. So again, just making sure you've got, you know, your, your fraud risk policies, your ethic, ethics policies are up to date. You know, that's probably a very important area. Um, credit card policy, you know, assets, making sure, you know, are we, you know, dispose, when we dispose of something, do we have the proper documentation that we disposed of the police cruiser and how did we dispose of it, you know, through public sale or it was junk, you know, that type of thing. That, that's probably one of the, between the purchasing and the policies are, are key. Because that protects you as a board too by having those policies all in place. I think that part was addressed too on, on getting rid of uh, uh, equipment or apparatus that the manager made sure that there were proper mm -hmm. documents to get that in. And board, and board approval as well, right. yeah. which um, so from this point forward, uh, declarations of surplus by the board, yep. documentation of how you deal with the surplus equipment after that, um, and that's something that we brought as well, and, and the board uh, promulgated that uh, a few months ago. So, um, again, stepping in the right yep. direction, I think. Well, I, from a personal standpoint, I do thank you for your time and your effort. Like I said, it's just a ton for me to digest, and <laughs> I take a ton of time. Um, but at least I'm comfortable that we're in the right direction, mm -hmm. and that's the bottom line. Yeah. And uh, thank you very much. This, this has probably been one of the best uh, times in my three years here seeing a report that came out like this. I mean, it was very thorough, mm -hmm. very accurate. You explained a lot of things that probably the average person wouldn't know, and everybody got a chance to see it, and I think it was very, very accurate. I think you guys did one great job. Thank you. I appreciate that.